Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the DrByCuspid.com podcast. My name is Kevin Henry. I am the editor in chief for Dr. We recently introduced the Dr. By Cuspid podcast series that we were going to partner with Celerant Consulting on the Celerant CEO podcast series, interviewing various CEOs about their business mindset and what they share with their dental colleagues and how they've gotten started to where they are today. And I'm pleased to be joined today by Dr. Alex Sanders, who's the president and CEO, founder of Diagnocat. Dr. Sanders, how are you? Hi, how are you? Thanks, having, thanks for having me here today. I, I'm glad to have you on. I'm so excited to talk to you and, and, and congratulations to you. I know that your company was a winner of the Cuspies, uh, which I'm really excited about that you all won the uh, best new imaging product. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. It is an honor for us and we've been celebrating. We were so excited to have this award. Well, tell us a little bit about you and tell us a little bit about Diagnocat before we kind of dive into some of those business tips and tricks to share. Uh, well, I'm a dentist by education. Uh, I haven't been practicing maybe for more than 10 years already because uh, I'm more on the business side. I, uh, uh, I ran my own uh, group practice, pretty large group pra practice in Eastern Europe. And uh, uh, five years ago, I found that uh, Diagnocat, dental artificial intelligence for 3D and 2D uh, uh, X-ray images. And uh, right now we are um, presenting our product uh, in, you know, almost across the world, in Europe, in uh, New Zealand, Australia, in Canada, and we, we're waiting for our approval uh, in the United States and uh, we'll be hitting the market uh, in the United States, hopefully next year. Sounds great. Well, again, congratulations. Looking forward to seeing this come to the United States. And and obviously you are knee deep into AI and everything that it means to dentistry. What excites you most about AI in the dental industry? Well, um, AI is everywhere right now. AI is, is a part of our lives and we, we just need to admit it. And, uh, uh, it's it's uh, uh, we live in this era of AI, and everyone is using ChatGPT or MidJourney. And uh, uh, right now, our patients are expecting us, the doctors, to uh, to use artificial intelligence intelligence because um, I I believe that for the patients, uh, technology means quality. Uh, for in in many in many cases, that's that's why we buy all these uh, you know new inventions and uh, you know uh, bring into our offices uh, uh, expenses pieces of equipment and so on. So um, and of course our patients expect us to use everything everything possible to increase quality and and reduce emissions and errors, and uh, that's that's where AI comes to into play. And this excites me the most, and that that's exactly that's that's why I started this company, because at the time when I when I uh, you know came up with this idea, uh, we had a very good practice, uh, very very busy, very effective, very efficient, but still there were emissions and errors in my practice, and I saw how uh, large healthcare companies in the United States were pioneering. AI technologies in neurology or cardiology, and I, I thought that it's a it's a perfect fit for dentistry because this uh, strong dig digitalization trend within dentistry and uh, just how often we use uh, digital imaging. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have to admit, in preparation for our interview, I, I looked on your LinkedIn profile, and, and I know that it lists you as a serial entrepreneur. And I know that that's something that, you know, as we've talked, I know you're very proud of the businesses that you've built. What What is the key to building a successful business in your mind? Uh, well... Uh, 
I think the that first of all you 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 have to love it and you have to want it. Uh, and I can't live without making business. It's it's just how I how I how I was born. I I feel it. I feel like that. I I can't live without it. But it is not only it's not only uh, uh, your mindset. It's all it's also a lot of education and uh, a lot of labor. Because um, based on my experience, a lot of dentists uh, they think that they can't be good managers because you know they they communicate with the patients well and they have uh you know good practice and they, and they are good dentists but it's not necessarily that they become good managers because you know um let's have this example uh to become a good manager without proper education just being a dentist is is the same ridiculous like like becoming a dentist with a managerial education does it make sense Yes. So uh, I start. I start. I study all my life. I I went to Harvard Business School for executive education. I read a lot of books about about management. I participate in all the managerial events, and uh, I do my I, I do my best in this aspect. It, is, is there a difference in your mind in building a successful group practice or a dental practice and building a successful? business in the dental industry? Are there different principles or is it basically the same business principles to reach success? <laughs> well, um, uh, there is a, there is a statement that if you're a good manager in one field, you can be a great manager in anything, in, in, in a, any other field. However, my experience uh, says that the opposite, because when I, when I started Diagnocat, I was a very successful dental entrepreneur. I had, I had, I don't know, hundreds of employees in my company. And uh, I thought it would be so easy for me to manage, to manage a small, a small startup, but it's not the case. And these software engineers, uh, they taught me, uh, that it's a, it's a completely different culture. It's a com completely different field. And it was extremely hard to manage them to, you know, to set up a team, to uh, motivate people, uh, to make them create a good product because, because the, uh, the approaches, the, uh, the expectations are completely dif different among, you know, within dentistry and, and within uh, software and uh, engineering. And, uh, I think, uh, when you start a new, uh, um, start, start working in, in a new field, in new, in a new domain, uh, it just, it just costs you more in the modern world. You have to have a very focused expertise in the field to move fast, to, to have this velocity. Otherwise you just, you know, pay with your money and your time for your mistakes. And, uh, it, it, it's for me, it was, it was like an MBA in some, of some kind, you know, to, 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 to start something new like that. Okay. What's the best business? Sorry. What is the best piece of business advice that you ever received? Hmm. Oh, it is, it is, Probably difficult to say, but I always come back to uh, to the uh, to the rule or, or to the uh, how to say uh, to the explanation of different business levels uh, that I was taught that, that I learned in Harvard Business School from uh, Professor Bomer. He explained five levels of development of healthcare organization. The first level is culture, management of culture, where we uh, uh, take, care, uh, take care about the atmosphere, about, you know, explaining people how to uh, 
act in the best interest of the patients. Uh, the next level is the management of resources where, where we become champions in how to manage uh, time, money, supplies, uh, and all the, uh, all the resources that we manage in, in the organization. The third level is the management of treatment, uh, of treatment outcomes where we evaluate uh, treatment outcomes, uh, immediate and long-term outcomes, and and try to fix uh, if some if something is wrong with the clinicians. The next level is the treatment is is the management of processes, uh, where we establish the exact processes uh, about how we treat our patients, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, constantly monitor these processes and the last the the last the the final level the fifth level is called management of decisions and uh it is the ai it is automation of what all the doctors are doing and uh, i think i think it's true not only for the healthcare domain but for a, any organization and uh the idea here is that you you cannot actually jump to the next level until until you take care about the first levels that's that's probably the best piece of advice that i've ever got it, is it hard to stay on that level and not try to move ahead for you or is it something you've always been able to focus on completing one before making that jump ahead well uh it is uh Sometimes people do these mistakes. They they try to implement something very advanced or complicated in their smaller small uh, organization with a family culture. Something 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 that is not necessarily uh, you know uh, brings profit uh, immediately. So they they need to move step by step, and that that's a good idea. And uh, it is obvious that especially in healthcare, if you don't make sure that your team uh, has great atmosphere and uh, they love their their uh, their work and love their patients uh, especially in healthcare they're not they won't be efficient and effective okay we we've talked a little bit, a bit about ai we've talked uh, you mentioned automation are those really two of the key trends that you see for this year uh, as far as dental technology goes uh well definitely ai uh 3d printing biomaterials is is something that that we hear uh here and there that uh, these are the trends for for uh, in dentistry uh, right mm -hmm. now. However, I would like to mention that uh, we live in such a such a uh, uh, world where people are so overwhelmed with change. Everyone in in all the organizations they try to you know push their employees. They they try to implement change, and uh, people are uh, people are doing multiple projects at the same time. And they cannot be, uh, you know, they can't progress in such environment. Uh, so uh, this is the this is the negative part of the world where where we live. You know, the the world of the opportunities because because everything makes sense, and I want to try everything and and implement it right now. So uh, this is this is. This is the biggest trend uh, that I pay attention to right now. And in my organization, uh, especially this year, uh, I told them no more ideas, no more new things. We just make sure that we do things that we implemented last year in the, in the, in the best way we can. Makes perfect sense. It's a, it's a good goal. Absolutely. And last question for you today. Uh, I know a lot of dentists who will listen to this podcast have ideas about things, products that they could make, companies that they could found. What's the best piece of advice that you could give to them about starting their own journey of becoming a serial entrepreneur, much like you? Well, thank you. Thank you for this question. Uh... Uh, it was, it's always 
been a dream for me to start an IT company. Uh, and uh, uh, there was a lot of people who, who, who told me, no, don't do it. Uh, and uh, before I founded Dagnicat, I had another I had another startup that was not successful and I closed it. Uh, so I just kept going. I kept on uh, searching for, you know, ideas and uh, uh, probably, probably an advice that, that, uh, that I would give is um, start a startup or a new venture in a field where you have a very deep expertise. Because if, if you start something uh, in a field where you don't understand what's going on, how the market is organized, how, uh, what are the problems of the, of the customers, most likely you're not going to be successful. So I started uh, Dagnicat be because I understood uh, what problems we experienced as uh, as a dental clinic, as a uh, as a dental as dental practitioners, uh, and as patients, I knew so well all these acts, all these aspects, and it it that that's why uh, I think we we we're creating a great product that helps thousands and thousands of people today. Well, and again, we are excited that your product was named as a winner of the Cuspies this year. Uh, and I'm thrilled that you're our first CEO on this journey uh, and that we we learned a little bit about your insights. So Dr. Alex Sanders, the founder and CEO of DiagnoCat, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin, for your questions. Thank you for having me here again. And see you. <laughs> and I'll see you. And uh, hopefully IDS, who knows where, you know, I look forward to hopefully our paths crossing very soon. So and we appreciate absolutely. all of you listening to this episode of the drbycuspid.com podcast. Absolutely. This is part of the Dr. By Cuspid Seller and CEO podcast series. We'll be back very soon with another episode with more insight from an amazing CEO.